scientists or more, more um, uh, committed to the that we have to influence the health, uh, then they are more committed to the photography
Hvala što pratite. 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 And the reason you can see the characteristics of the critical success factors are that they're not very detailed but they're very high level. And I think it's tough to happen in order for the project to succeed. And so they identify, for example, the strong internal and external commitment. Compared to the management team for the implementation of the project, shared motivation is key. And so these are the two key separate organizations in order for the project to change. And they need to be able to share the motivation. So you can see that there are people who say, What is the initial meeting of the establishment of the project? Do they identify these things? Thank you. 
to listen to the idea and to take the idea. So, by doing this, um, they have the ability to be able to specialize it with that and then also to be able to bring understanding for other people's um, ideas. And so that's also an interesting perspective. And then the more learning specifically is the benefits uh, and to the company that has been students. Uh, they're able to learn um, from other people on the team and they're able to take the information and knowledge that they uh, intended to make the team from the team of the university. So um, the only thing that we can change the neighbor is the ability to teach them to change the general of the team. And, um, okay, let's go and read up to the next question. So, so, in terms of uh, controlling projects, uh, that would be the next step after these two. Um, okay, so, um, Oh, okay, so first of all, we have um, like, the project control committee. And um, so this is a section of the control project. And uh, we have the project control committee. Uh, that is a list of, it says, sometimes I abbreviate it as PCC, and it's a list of stakeholders. Um, that and listen to uh, the contributory ideas in terms of the uh, project. And it can be a permanent group, or it can be a, like a non permanent group, just again from some of the people that are the first thing you talk about is that you can talk to the But anyway, this is just like a stakeholder. It can be from different stakeholders as well. That the um, listen to and contribute to ideas in terms of the project implementation. And then planning with flexibility to so the three that um, nine two, and that's on page two fifty two. And here we have the reason that kind of benefits of the plan. Uh, we have communication, confidence in the project, reporting, research allocation, and financial plan. And, um, for example, with communication, we can share all of the stakeholders' needs and what needs to be done in that way. And um, so, you know, who will do what in the project plan? But if you don't have a plan, if you have different understandings of what has to be agreed and what will be the so confusion and misunderstanding. So, basically, I'm saying that they point out that all of these, and all of these issues are communication, confidence in project, reporting, research allocation, and financial planning, the things will go better if you have a plan than if you don't have a plan. So confidence in the project can demonstrate how the whole desired outcome can be achieved. And um, this uh, encourages people to debate and make those incentives set the plan. Reporting is not only for reporting progress, but also to keep track of uh, what you've done and uh, being able to point back to that later as improvement and uh, being able to specify your spending. And then uh, resource allocation uh, you can take the allocation to the right people at the right time. All project participants can be sure about what their role is and, and when they're required to speak. So it's about the efficiency uh, in the organization being able to allocate resources efficiently. And as a planning, clarify how long people and facilities are needed. So it's like uh, you don't see people's time indefinitely, but there's a certain amount of time spent on certain stages in the project. And how many uh, physical resources or how much financial resources are needed. So all of this is part of the benefits of having a plan. Next section. And then um, the more important 
police-controlled procedure. And this is about uh, uh, when are you supposed to uh, um, uh, think and then take it to new information or to have a new understanding of patterns or functions or the new features in your organization or maybe you you develop some prototypes and gain information from the prototypes. Or you have different organizational priorities. Or you have uh, uh, new input from competitors. Competitors are doing something different. Or there may be market filtration. So there's a lot of different factors that could influence when you need to have um, 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 control and um, filter. And that's just more. Talk about that in case it's a secret. So, um, there's sort of these factors that you know, you have to identify when you need to look at change, and then you need to identify the change to find it, do an impact assessment, um, document it, make an agreement about how it's going to handle it with the stakeholders in an order to trust. So, these are part of and then the uh, managing escalation, that's if you're trying to force. And um, that's from this figure here. So you have to use identify if that's to allocate action, uh, if you take action, and then um, the reason that um, what they point out here is that uh, there is a difference between risk and managing risk and managing issues. Because a risk is something that could happen but hasn't happened yet. And an issue is something that did already happen and has in some ways caused a problem. But you can you can identify both, you can follow the training of uh, assessment and assessment for both types of you know, things that have happened and things that may happen. And uh, as it was coming out here, we need to do steps or outline this out um, here in the managing change, identification, mutual awareness that change has occurred, definition, quantification, and analysis of the scope and the nature of the change, uh, impact assessment, likely uh, project effects in terms of cost. So that's part of the assessment. And then uh, documentation, the more the documentation is allocation. So I think this might be part of uh, the action. They also have um, allocation of fees that are And then agreement with the action of the function. So you can use these um, projects in the uh, new dramatic change steps. So that you can use it in, in identifying the, um, how you deal with this change in the future. So it's usually a great thing. Uh, like if you have a, a system, you, you're interested in how you can have IT system, and you're worried about the system. And then so you need to identify what are the possible the security uh, where it could come from. And then you have to accept what is the likelihood of this happening. And then uh, you need to, you want to spend this from happening. So you need to think how much money you're going to be spend in order to make my system more secure and make it from happening. So you're going to do spend. And then you do, um, you do implement these security methods. And then after that, to maybe report to see how the, the action has turned out. Like, are they as impact preventing uh, the system? So it has had some happen. I mean, so you could do this with different types of systems. So you could do this with different types of systems. So you can just start the system to make it for English and for English systems. Um, then uh, we can say, uh, point out on page uh, 
the recording track because I'm a kid. And it's very important to me to do it and to do all the benefits that we spoke about to take care of me. So, identify all the problems, justify you to resources, gain support at different levels, and then learn from the past. Being able to identify the the progress, the time you spend, the clothes, and then the other stuff, and the daily costs, the food you're doing, and the issues and tactics. So, the recording is very important part. And then, that could be the role of the administrative system. And then, you might have the overall program manager and different types of different types And then the um, an energized environment is um, we, we want to promote motivation, increase increasing motivation, increasing morale, and maintaining the class of the whole time of the program. And uh, the whole project and practices. And so you get uh, to get the best from the project staff, you need to consider uh, individual and friend development. So whether or not it's training, if it's new knowledge, if it can be internalized and new education needs and other people are going to be important, but education is an important part of that long term direction. You need to be able to communicate with your strategy and vision, clarify goals and personal objectives, have regularly review performance and give rewards and recognition when it's deserved. And then create a well known culture of putting out of communication that can align with having to make changes and having to make new things at the time. So, this kind of environment will support uh, better motivation and better morale in the way that you can do um, Okay, uh, before we break, I want to uh, just uh, put up an exercise that we're going to do. I'm going to record this in second part of the lecture, but we're going to, we're going to work on this. And uh, it should be a useful exercise for us to kind of work on it. So, Uh, the exercise we're going to do is that um, uh, you are designing a really hard to set program with an experience group, so, and um, you design, you're, you're uh, designing a program that is a uh, textual resource management system for new airlines. We need to uh, 
design a project overview card from the PCPA and a program management structure card that is both in the PCPA. Thank you. 